Okay, so the next couple of problems we'll take a look at involve finding the exact value for something. Now, 75 is not going to be an angle that you're going to see on our table or unit circle. We usually have the, the uh, 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. So we don't have a 75 involved in there. However, the sum and difference formulas are going to allow us to actually find an exact value for this one. What we need to do is we need to create either a sum or difference of two numbers that allows us to be 75 and then that way we can apply one of the sum and difference formulas. But the idea is the numbers we pick should be numbers that are on our unit circle or numbers that we can find by using a reference angle, either one. That way it'll allow us to put exact values in and get the answer. So 75, if you want to think, there's many different ways that you could add two numbers together to equal 75, but particularly the one that I want to use is 30 degrees plus 45. 30, 30 plus 45 will equal 75, and then 30 and 45 individually are values that come off our unit circle. So that's what pair you want to look for uh, when you separate this. We've made, we turned it into a sum, so that means that we need to apply the first formula. Here's my x and here's my y. And again, the order doesn't matter here. I could have done 45 plus 30. That wouldn't matter. I would still get the same answer. So doing, doing it this way, I'm going to expand it out by using the uh, first formula. So I'm going to do sine of 30 degrees and then cosine 45 degrees. And then we have plus cosine 30 degrees sine 45 degrees. So we've used the first formula to break all that up. And the, everything we have here, every single one of these, is a value we can get off of our unit circle. Sine 30, cosine 45, every one of those we can get. So we, we're, I'm going to go ahead and fill these in with the values from your table. Uh, so sine 30 should be 1 half. Uh, cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is also going to be square root of 2 or um, that's going to be square root of 3 over 2, sorry, square root of 3 over 2, and then this is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so we have each one of those individually, sine 30, cosine 45, cosine 30, and then co sine 45. We have all the exact values from our unit circle. If we multiply across the top, across the bottom, square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 6 over 4. And you can write it like this, or again, if you'd like to put it over a single denominator, we could also do that. So either one of these would be considered the exact value. So remember, exact value is using fractions uh, or square roots. Uh, if necessary, you don't want to use a calculator because that would be just an approximation. Okay, we have another one we want to find the exact value of. Now 165, again, that's an angle that's too big. It's not on our table or our unit circle. So we need to break this down again. Now the, the question is, well, how do we break this down into two values that are off my table. Well, unfortunately, this one, we can't get two values off our table because the biggest ones we, that we know would be 45 and 60, and that adds up to 105. That's not going to work for 165. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start with one value from our table, and then the remaining value we get is one that we're going to have to use a reference angle in order to get the exact value. So for this, there's different ways that you could write 165. You could do uh, 30 and 135, or, you, or 45 and 120, or many different combinations. You just want to pick one to where you have one angle on your uh, table and the other one is going to be one where you can work with a reference angle. So there's different combinations, but the one that I'm going to use specifically here is going to be 45 plus 120. So 45 is an angle from our table and 120 will be one that we'll have to use a reference angle for. We've broken it up into this, a cosine with a sum. That's this one right here. So we're going to change it into the third formula here. So the first value is x, the second value is a y, and we're going to apply it to that third formula. We get cosine 45 and then cosine 120, then minus sine 45 and sine 120. So that's going to be taking that and rewriting it in terms of uh, these angles. Now cosine 45, sine 45, we can get those directly from the table, so uh, that's all we have to do there in that case. However, with these other ones, cosine 120 and sine 120, we need to use a reference angle in order to get those. So in order to accomplish that, we have to first, we, have, we want to do the, uh, there's a three-step process we talked about in a previous session when working with reference angles. 
uh, and also finding the exact value. So the, the, uh, the three step process, I'll do that down here. The first step would be, you wanna draw this uh, in standard position and figure out what the reference angle is. Now, if I do that over here, uh, if I draw this one out, 120, okay, so 120 is gonna be in the second quadrant. So my reference angle, my RA, my reference angle here is gonna be 180, minus 120. That's the formula if you're in the second quadrant. We talked about that before, 180 minus theta. This gives you 60 degrees. For step number two, you want to apply the trig function to the reference angle. Now in this case, our trig function is both cosine and sine. We actually want to find both those values. So first I'll do cosine 60 and I get the value of 1 half. And then I'm also going to do sine of 60 and that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. So I'm doing that for each one. For step number 3, I want to apply the appropriate sign depending on which quadrant you're in and we're going to do the all students take calculus uh, sign rule for that. So if I want to find cosine 120, 120 is here in the second quadrant. If I do all students, that means sine's positive, everything else is going to be negative, which means that cosine 120 needs to be a negative value. That has to be minus 1 half. For this, if I want to do sine 120, we just mentioned that sine's got to be positive in that quadrant, all students, so that means that this is going to be, we don't have to change the sine on root 3 over 2, so now we have that. So we've done reference angles and we've found now uh, the exact values for each of those. So now I have all the exact values I need to finish this problem. Cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 120, we found that right here, that's negative 1 half. We have minus sine 45 is from the table, square root of 2 over 2, and sine 120 is this exact value, root 3 over 2 there. And now we're going to combine everything all together. We get negative root 2 over 2, and then we have minus root 6 over 2 when we multiply across the top, across the bottom. And again, you could always write this as a, a single fraction if you wanted to, and it would be this one here. So therefore, Cosine 165 is equal to all this. So if you were to put this into a calculator and get a decimal approximation, you would get exactly the same decimal as this one. Okay, one more. We have tangent 105. We want to find the exact value of that. Now, uh, the previous example I did uh, involved finding one angle from the table and also another angle we had to use with reference angles. Now this one, 105, we can actually write that as 45 plus 60 and then we have two angles that happen to be from the table. So if you can get two angles from the table, you want to go ahead and, and definitely do that. So 45 plus 60, that's how I'm going to rewrite this. It adds up to be 105 and then these two angles individually are from our table. We've written it out as a sum, tangent of two things uh, added together. So that means that we need to use this formula. This one has the tangent x plus y in it. The x is going to be 45 and this, the, uh, the y is going to be uh, 60. And again, the order doesn't matter here because we're adding. So let's rewrite this one. We have tangent of 45 degrees plus tangent 60 degrees. And the bottom, 1 minus tangent 45, tangent 60. Okay, so each of these we're putting in the the values, uh, the x and the y values. Now every one of these, tangent 45 and tangent 60, we can use our table to get the exact values for those. So for tan 45, that value is going to be 1 from your table. Tangent 60 is just square root of 3 only. We have 1 and then minus 1 times square root of 3. What you end up getting is 1 plus radical 3 over 1 minus radical 3. Now in my class, I would definitely take this as an answer. However, if you're taking this with a different teacher or possibly you're using a homework uh, online uh, system, some kind of learning management system online, some software, it might require you to do more of this answer. If you, if you put that in, uh, it, they may not like that answer because it's not rationalized. So in my notes, uh, I did show how to rationalize this answer. I'm not going to show that here because I just wanted to show you the the trig part of it only. However, if you take a look at that, uh, you would have to multiply the top and bottom by the opposite sign of the bottom. So you'd multiply top and bottom by 1 plus square root of 3 and go through those steps and that would get you the rationalized answer. But again, this would be the exact value for tangent 105.